Oh, right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. As y'all can see, it's hot. It's 91 degrees, 60% humidity, feels like 98. I am soaked. Got sweat dripping off me. And didn't do any work on the shop today. Um, but I decided I'm going to do an experiment because my initial plan was to build the shop like this, bookshelf girts, um, and then do this two inch foam insulation in between. As you can see, I've been working, cutting this stuff. Put it in between and then just put the board and batten and metal on the outside. I do the same thing with the roof. Put that two inch insulation in and put metal on it. Well, then I had another idea. I was like, if I would do, get a radiant barrier house route and put that on the outside of the two inch foam and then add two by four purlins to the outside to where I have a inch and a half air gap between my radiant barrier and the board and batten and metal on the sides and roof, that should help quite a bit, theoretically. And I priced everything out. Of course, I have all the foam here already. Pretty sure I'll have enough anyway. And priced the radiant barrier out and it's like 1500 bucks for single side radiant barrier house wrap. Um, vapor barrier. It's completely waterproof. It's solid. It's not perfect. It's not the single or double bubble. It's there's no there's no bubbles. It's just a it's just like the thickness of a house wrap, but it's got aluminum foil. Um. Anyway, so I decided I'm gonna do an experiment, and this is what I came up with. I built two of these. They are built exactly the same way that my building's gonna be. Two by six walls. One of these will be left like this with siding and metal. The other one I'm going to completely wrap in radiant barrier. I'll just get some single bubble um, instead of ordering that other stuff. I'll just use single bubble for now. Wrap this thing in that and then side and roof it. And I'm going to order two Bluetooth thermometers from Amazon. I'm going to put a thermometer in each one of them and leave them sit out here on the concrete pad. All right, I made a little bit of progress on the experimental buildings and on getting rid of facial hair. But uh, here's what I got so far. I've got this one here. I don't have any of my metal yet. I got the all the wood siding put on this one. This is the one that's just foam, obviously, as y'all can see. Um, got the two inch foam in here and then inch and a half air gap on the outside of all the two inch foam. I'm not gonna put anything in here. I tried cutting a piece, wedge piece, and if I had a table saw, which I need to buy one before I do insulate the shop, but if I had a table saw, I could rip a piece to fit in there, but I need to put metal on this one yet. My thermometers are supposed to be coming today. As you can see it's just solid. I don't, I'm not gonna put the battens on. I don't think that's gonna be that big of a deal. But then this one here, I've got the two inch foam. Essentially, it looks the same as this one did um, before I put the, well, it looks the same as what it did in the last section of this video but then I just put this single bubble radiant barrier. It's, in, it's shiny on both sides. Not that that's gonna make a difference. All right, on. I've got the buildings finished. The little mini shops. That's what I'm naming them. Mini shop one, mini shop two. That's what I've got the thermometers labeled as. And 
here's the uh, mini shops. I got them propped up. I put the screw up there, same height on both of them. I tried to eliminate all the variables I could. The only variables, the only variable that I can think of is this one here, which has the radiant barrier on it. I didn't have enough foam from the pieces that I cut up. I didn't feel like cutting up another whole piece. So this one is spliced about right here down the roof. So there's one extra splice in the roof on the two inch foam. So that's the only variables between the two aside from the radiant barrier. Um, here's the thermometers. And I've got, see that little black dot? That's mini shop one. That's mini shop two. Mini shop one is gonna be, see if I can get in here and hang this thing and not get caught in my own rabbit trap. Mini shop one is gonna be the one with just the foam, no radiant barrier. And mini shop two, as you can see right here, has a radiant barrier. Hang them in there the same way. I'll drop them down and I'll, the, I had them both sitting under the pile of wood there. So they're both the exact same temperature and within 0.4% humidity of each other currently. All right, there they are, drop down. I got them both facing the same way the shop's gonna be facing. I moved both of them. One was sitting here, one was sitting there. I moved them both to fresh concrete. So they're starting off with the exact same floor temperature and everything. Like I said, I tried to eliminate as many variables as I possibly could. All right, final update for this experiment. I got about a week's worth of data. Um, I graphed it all out. I'll go over that here in just a second. Um, ideally, I would have gotten data points from, like, I got at least three data points per day. Morning, afternoon, evening. Ideally, I would have done, obviously, if I would have been home full-time, which I'm not, um, It'd have been cool to do like one an hour or what I might do for future experiments is buy a data logging thermometer or two data logging thermometers where it tracks a 24 hour period, a lot more precise. I guess I should get three of them. So I have one, I can have one outside ambient air temperature, track that and then track the data in each of the mini shops. But anyway, here is my graph for what I uh, what I tracked. Um, I guess first of all, before I show you all the graph, I calculated out the average temperatures of each mini shop, and I will just preclude this with saying that it wasn't as big a difference as I expected. Um, the temperature differences actually surprise me at how how unmind blowing the differences were. Like it sort of surprised me at, at how close the temperatures actually were to each other between the two. It wasn't as as significant a difference as what I was expecting. Um, for example, the average temperature of mini shop number one was 80.465 degrees. Average temperature of mini shop two was 79.843 degrees for a difference of two, difference of 0.622 degrees. Five eighths degree difference. Now remember, that's average temperature what if I, if I would just give you all that data point everybody would be like it's not worth spending the extra money on the radiant barrier it's a scam it's it's just not worth it but let me show you all the graph and here is the graph until there's the average temperature differences and this 
is a scale from 70 degrees to the highest temperature is 89 degrees. So 19, 19 degree difference here. Pink line is ambient air temperature. So obviously that fluctuates up and down during the day. Um, the yellow line is mini shop number one. And the blue line is mini shop number two. So as I said, the average temperatures are not that different. Very similar. But mini shop one, the temperature fluctuations are a lot more than mini shop number two. Mini shop two comes through, I mean, it dips there, but it doesn't spike near as high. Well, when I say not near as high, the temperature difference at the, at the biggest difference between these two is 83.2 to 88.7. So that's 5.5 degrees difference. So that's a pretty good difference. The biggest difference in at the coolest temperatures is 83.7 to 73.7 to 76.9. So now granted there, Mini Shop 1 or Mini Shop 2 is actually cooler, but look at the difference in temperature drop from 78.5 to 73.7 is 4.8 degrees versus 81.4 to 76.9 is 4.4.5 degrees. So you've got, what did I say that was? That's a five, yeah. So that's 2.8 2 to 4.5 degrees difference. So the temperature swings are just a lot more. So if you're heating or cooling the building, you're going to use less energy in heating because you're not going to lose your heat as much in the evenings or when it gets cold. And when you're cooling the building, you're not going to lose your cool near as quickly. So your heating and cooling units aren't going to have to be running as often. Um, I also did a 24 hour span, um, Friday evening to yesterday evening. I did a span, a graph, and I'll show you all that. All right. So here is the, I believe I, it was seven o'clock Friday evening is when I started. And 7 or 7.30 Saturday evening was the last temperature. But this was all taken in a 24-hour sp 24 hour span. I wish I could, put, could have put the times in here, too. Um, I'm out of printer ink, so I couldn't print this out. If I could have printed this out, I would have put the times. But as you can see, blue, the light blue is the ambient temperature. And this was at, like I said, seven o'clock in the evening. So it had cooled off from, it was a lot hotter Friday. It was, Friday was hot. Uh, high of 88 degrees, I think it was Friday. So that's one thing that, a difference here. Friday's high was 88 degrees. The high inside mini shop one was 89.2. So it was hotter than the ambient temperature. And then that drops down and again, 89.2 degrees down to 80.3 degrees is a swing of 8.9 degrees. Whereas mini shop two was at 86.6 to 80.3, a swing of 6.3. So almost two degrees difference. And up here at the highest point, we're looking at two and a half degrees difference there. Saturday again was pretty warm, high of 88 degrees. Um, the temperatures here, you can see right here, they start splitting. And again, the highest temperature here, 85.2 to 83. 
eight. So again, about two and a half degrees difference. So while the average temperatures are very similar in this experiment between the two, the differences are the temperature swings. Um, the mini shop with the radiant barrier obviously retains its heat better. And once it does cool off, it takes longer for it to heat back up from outside um, influence. Like I said, this is gonna be the last video, last update um, for this experiment with this particular setup. My next experiment, I am going to take these buildings apart. I'm gonna take the wood siding off and to get a better simulation as to what people normally do in pole barns, I'm going to use metal on the sides and I'm going to take the two inch foam out of both of them and just do radiant barrier on one, nothing on the other, and see how effective radiant barrier is on its own with metal sides, metal roof. And I'll post another series. Um, another series on that or another video on that rather and I'm gonna have these mini shops kicking around for quite some time I want to do experiments this winter with um, seeing how different different insulations retain heat when it's cold outside instead of when it's warm outside and yeah just up there's quite a few different things I want to try with them so as I do each experiment um, I'll post a video on it and if there's any combination or variable or anything that y'all can think of that y'all want me to test with these throw it out I've got the thermometers I've got the buildings here obviously um, I'll do what I can thanks for watching and see y'all next time